information about Cambodian life, society, environment. I find that to be a very interesting thing to use. It's things that have a kind of personality, you know. Look at this one here. This is pretty cool. Well, look at it. It's got character. Some modern artists cannot even make work this interesting. And this is done with no intention of it being interesting. You know, what people throw away, what people don't, don't consider important, we think it's important. Sticking by his principles of no shortcuts, Sabir makes his own charcoal paint out of beeswax. He traveled to the Ratanakiri province in northern Cambodia to collect this pure, raw beeswax. I love the smell. It's that beautiful, sweet smell of honey. And just the color. You just can't beat it. The beeswax is boiled, and the charcoal is then mixed into the recipe. This is the same charcoal that we cook with. It's wood charcoal. It's completely natural. I love this color. I've never made a black oil painting. I never had any intention to. But I can say I, I love this charcoal and wax mixture. His work is very much about a sense of play, a sense of discovery, and a sense of making. He's a maker. With the mixture that he has cooked, Sapir then applies it onto the canvas. It's a very physical process. It's not uh, something you do with a small brush. It doesn't feel like painting to me. It feels like house painting. When it comes to my own work, everything is a kind of surprise. If I think I've gotten somewhere and I think I've been there before and I haven't progressed further than that, I know that work is not done. Sapir so continues to surprise us with his most recent bamboo strips and natural pigment paintings. You, you ask yourself, what would happen if you stick a piece of bamboo onto some paint and you put on a piece of paper? You say, well, I don't know. So you do it, and you find out. With his devoted set of tools, his bamboo stick, a piece of paper, and red iron oxide, he adds one new ingredient, music, and lets his trusted bamboo stick do the rest of the work. It makes perfect sense to me. It refined my way of thinking. I think my work is very intuitive, unplanned. It demands uh, patience. You have to enjoy working this way to make this kind of work. Sort of meditative and slow. Looking closely and trying to get, trying to go in a little deeper inward. Painting, I believe, is something that carries an element of nostalgia for him, coming back to those days when he was still struggling to find his voice as an artist. And I think maybe it's that time in his career when he wants to revisit an earlier chapter and see how differently he might do that today. So Piep's works are full of intricate details, subtle connections, and a circular in nature. From his early paintings and simple forms to his complex geometric shapes and abstract paintings, they all connect to his most recent sculpture, a simple flower. A kid will not go to a migrate and say, wow, what is that? What does it mean? A kid will come to the flower and say, what is that flower? Maybe it doesn't have any meaning other than that. And maybe that's OK. You don't have to make a flower that makes sense. The cycles in Sopiep's work are reflected in his life. It took his father, the man who was responsible for teaching him how to work with his hands, 30 years to return to Cambodia. He says, uh, so son, you're just making baskets. <laughs> People are paying money for this, you know? <laughs> I said, yeah, I know. It's crazy. It's a, it's, it's a really crazy thing, you know? There's been an incredible interest in Sopip's work from around the world, and I think that it is made in a way that moves across artistic forms, that it uh, moves across artistic languages.
languages. He's been extremely successful in marrying a vernacular idiom, which is his use of indigenous materials, with a very accessible international visual art language. And I think this really is why he's so successful in the art world today. It comes out of this kind of very deep kind of part of yourself where it resonates. There's a certain beauty and aesthetic that you're drawn to. And for each person, that becomes quite a different experience. In art, you are adding something special, unique to a lot of people's lives. I'm thinking I'm doing something useful with my time. I'm a big fan of art that uh, you can experience, so 